Yo everyone, what's up? This is the complete primer for Normandy Americans. In the next minutes you're gonna see and learn everything you need to know about the campaign itself, especially focused on Americans, what is the best stuff the Americans have, which are the traps to avoid, and lots of fine details and secrets most people don't know. So, enjoy! I'm in charge. Now, the most important thing to understand about this campaign is that the both factions are very asymmetrically built. This means the strengths the Americans have usually aren't the strengths of the Germans and reversed. So, for example, you start the game with a very good beginner tank. The M5A1 has really good armor, especially from the front. This front armor is ridiculously strong, especially if you compare it to the German beginner tank, which has basically no armor. You have an OK cannon, and you have two machine guns. Now, this thing is really strong against infantry. It's good against the German beginner tanks, of which you're gonna see lots. And it has very good speed. And additionally to that, it can actually climb hills. Now, many maps in the campaign are containing hills. Or little trench parts where you have to drive a bit upwards. This tank can climb all of it. You can use it as a flanking tank. And even with the small cannon you can just start penetrating the medium tanks of the enemies and you can even penetrate the stronger German tanks if you find their weak spots. So for this reason I recommend right when you start the campaign just click on the enemy campaign and just look at the German tanks. For example here this one has, well, it has extremely weak side armor and the front armor isn't that good either. So as long as you hit the weak spots like this little part in the front or anything on the side, you're gonna kill it instantly. If you go over to the to the next German tanks, you're gonna see, alright, Panzer 3 has his side skirts, but still, you can still penetrate it really nicely. The turret on the top is extremely weak. You can easily penetrate it if it with your with your beginner tank, you can penetrate these two weak spots. Just anything that doesn't look like a solid metal block, easily destroyed. Same thing goes for the side. And the back side anyway, but usually as long as you penetrate the, the, the weak side, everything's okay. Everything's okay. And if you go over to the next tank, Panzer 4 j this, this is the beginning of the good tanks, of the strong tanks. He has additional defense with side skirts on the turret. But still, these side parts, these side parts, very, very thinly armored. You can forget about penetrating it from the front, because the hull is quite strong, but you still have two weak spots, as we can see here, and the side, of course, also weak. And if we go to the next tank, well, let's take a look. Panzer 4H, well, this is a strong boy, but similar weaknesses on the sides, easily destroyed from the side. From the front, he also has the same weakness. Now, this, by the way, a thing many people don't get when they start a campaign. They just look at everything they will get themselves. Yeah, that makes sense. But if you're a tanker, if you're using tanks, you want to know the weaknesses of the enemy tanks. And you need to know them more, much more than you own your own, and then you understand your own tank. Premium tanks aren't really important. A, they are very rare. And B, most of the time, they're basically similar. Or even the same thing. So, yeah, it's not really worth the time looking at them. Now the first heavy tank you're gonna get as an enemy is the Panther A. By German classification of World War II it was a medium tank, but every other nation defined it as a heavy tank, so you see it as a heavy tank too. And here we have ridiculous armor, <laughs> ridiculous armor, so you can completely forget about the front. It still has little weak spots, but it's not that easy to hit them. And if you hit even a little bit left or right, nothing will affect it. So, yeah, you want to attack from the side again. 
or these two weak spots. Panther has the big advantage for you that it actually isn't that strongly armored. It can one-shot you, it can one-shot almost every American tank, but even without aiming at weak spots, but it still has its own two weak spots. So the Panther, even though being overall a very strong tank, if you know how to deal with it, still destroyable with your beginner tank. And now comes the big boy, big boy and the biggest boy in the campaign is the Tiger E. Now not only extremely iconical and cool looking, also extremely thick. Look at his armor, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. 100 millimeter front, <laughs> turret 80 meter and look at the side. The hull has 80 millimeter side armor. You can forget about flanking this thing because it won't affect anything. <laughs> it won't make a difference. If you have your medium tanks, it's worth attacking the sides, but with your uh, with your weak tanks it won't even penetrate. But you still have two potential weak spots. A, you have the machine gun port that you can penetrate, and B, if you have a stronger tank, you can destroy the cannon itself. The easiest way to destroy a Tiger, for example, with a Jumbo, is shooting at the cannon, destroying it, then instantly switching to high explosives, waiting until the enemy crew leaves their tank to repair it, and then you just shoot left or right on the ground of your high explosives and the shrapnel is gonna kill the crew that's trying to repair the tank. You do one shot left, one shot right, and the crew is gonna be dead. And this is how you deal with Tiger tanks. So yeah, you don't have to fear anything playing an American if you know how to deal with the strong German tanks. So, now you know how to dominate the battlefield with your beginner tank. But don't forget that you are still very easily destroyed. So don't try enemies to flank you and don't try to get flanked. Because with your speed you can easily either outflank your enemies or just avoid getting flanked or drive away or drive quickly forward and just spray into them. So you, you have enough knowledge and firepower to destroy most enemy tanks but you still can't take a single hit. So and every enemy with a TNT pack is gonna blow you up instantly. He doesn't even need to aim and every Panzerfaust is going to blow you up. But Panzerfausts aren't that common because they come very late in the campaign. Storm pistols come early, but they're weak and people don't want to use them, so you're quite safe overall. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, I think it was the wrong decision to build it there. Where's the other one? Okay. Come on. Okay. Well, let's get in now. Oh, what's this? I don't know. Next we have the sniper rifles. Now the sniper rifles are quite an easy topic for Normandy. There are many maps where it's recommendable using snipers in the first 30 seconds of a battle. For example, all of the beach landing maps like Versumer and D-Day and also some other maps where enemies love to hide. For example, when they hide in the forest behind, behind bushes, you can easily spot them with a scope or when they hide in trenches and you only see their heads and you can just headshot every single one of them. It basically doesn't matter which sniper rifle you use because they're literally very similar and the advantages aren't really that strong. Now the first sniper rifle you get, it has one of the strongest scopes, that it can aim better and further away, but it's also the slowest one. Damage is very high, damage, damage is instant kill at 400-500 meters, so that you always instant kill. So this is no problem, as long as you upgrade it obviously, otherwise it still almost basically instant kills all, all the time. But you want the luxurious situation of hitting enemy tree uh, arms and legs and still one-shotting them. But you can only do it with very high damage. So yeah, always upgrade the beginner rifles. They are very cheap to upgrade, very easily and quickly upgradable. Now, this is the beginner rifle. It has, well, it has a standard scope. The second sniper rifle you get has less magnification. But it has a more comfortable more comfortable scope, I would say. I personally love using it over the previous one and it's faster. Yeah, and it's faster, damage is basically the same, so yeah. The usual recommendation for snipers is always dual wield with them, because A, you won't need ammo pouches, ammo bog, uh, ammo pouches on you, 
because usually you don't survive long enough to use the additional armor. But what you absolutely need is more ammunition in your rifle. And you don't want to reload because look at those reload speeds, 3.5 seconds, 2.9 seconds. Even reduce it's still, well, 2.9 seconds, it's too long. If you dual wield sniper rifles, you can just switch from one sniper rifle to the other. Once you unlock both, you can A, just use the beginner rifle, and you don't have to buy new ones, because you you just save your silver orders, which is always a good idea to be efficient. And you can dual wield by having this as the first rifle for a longer range shooting, and if enemies get closer, you, you just switch over to this rifle. Which is the natural progression, because if you're attacking, you will have a large distance first, and then you get closer, so you switch from this to this. Or if the enemies are attacking, same thing. You shoot them from far away with this, and once they get closer, you just shoot the rest with this rifle. So yeah, very easy. And the biggest advantage of dual wielding, switching from one weapon to another is like half a second. And you're switching from, well, five bullets that you emptied into five new bullets. Ah, into... <laughs> Oh, sorry, wrong rifle. Uh, you switch into 8 into 5 new bullets again. So instead of reloading for 3 seconds, you just switch instantly to the next weapon if you have 5 rounds again. What you also can do is you use one sniper rifle and as a secondary weapon you use a normal bolt action. This way you have a bolt action for short range. You have a bayonet, you can, you can sprint with it, you can charge with it, you're very fast. And you can aim with it better and easier. So yeah, this is the general sniping strategy. You have these two very early in the campaign. As the last one, you unlock the Sniper Garand. Well, it, it has 6 stars, so it's very, very expensive to upgrade. It comes with the Sniper Tree Squad, so very late. Also, it takes a long time to upgrade. Is it worth it though? My verdict is clearly not. Because A, it's a semi-auto, so the damage is quite low. Damage is quite low. And... All of your, most of your engagements where you really want sniper rifles will be further away. So if you play against enemies in Normandy, most of the time you will always have to two shot enemies. Well, this is the last thing you want to do with a sniper rifle. A, it's not fun, because as a sniper you want to one shot enemies. B, it's very taxing on your focus, because you have to focus constantly. And instead of just doing one shot, you have to do twice the work. And see, well, what's the only advantage it has? It's faster, but well, faster, mm, not really. Because if you shoot fast with it, the recoil becomes ridiculous. So you still have to shoot quite slowly. And the 8 round magazine also isn't an upgrade, because if you have to do 2 hits every time, it's, it's literally a 4 round magazine. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I literally didn't, I tried it out once and it was completely underwhelming. So these two beginner sniper rifles are literally all you need and you get them early. So whoever loves sniping is going to be very happy as an American in Normandy because you get everything you need in the, in the first couple days that you play the campaign. Uh, let's keep going. For those wondering why I'm so slow, these sights are completely giving me ca cancer in the eyes. It's very hard to see. No, no, not yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my God! Look how he's jumping in the air. Man, these bayonets are strong. Damn it! When it comes to rifles, you have quite a large selection of weapons. So let's get clarity into the chaos. You start with the normal pre-World War One Springfield version, and as basically all starter rifles. It is, well, it has high damage, which is amazing, which is one of the best features about the game, because you can literally have one of the strongest damage outputs in the game right from the first minute you're playing. But as a downside, it's very slow. It can only do maximum 50 shots per minute. This is a theoretical number, and this is without reload speed, by the way. Yeah, So it's quite slow, but it gets the work done. Now, if you want to upgrade, you have the choice between two bolt actions and a bunch of semi-autos. Now here's the big deal. The main important thing about bolt actions are three factors. A, the sights. Some sights are good, some sights are bad. And depending on you personally, you may like specific sights more than others. B, the speed. For example, the first weapon shoots at 50 rounds per minute. This shoots at 69. 
So this is already 40% faster, which is which is a big upgrade. So this is a clear and strong upgrade over the first one, especially if you like the sides. Now, you a little bit later, still only costing one silver, you unlock the Lee Enfield number four. Now this weapon has quite horrible sides, but it has the big advantage of same speed and 10 rounds. If you love bolt actions and are willing to get used to the sides, I recommend playing this, because you can literally play this as until the very end of the campaign. If you love bolt actions, this is absolutely the best one, though suffering from, well, from bad sides. But yeah, it's okay, it's absolutely worth it. And it also gives you a big advantage over the German weapons, because they don't get bolt actions with more than 5 rounds. Yeah, so here you have a strong, strong advantage. Okay. All right, next objective. Oh, oh, lots of enemies on the next objective. When it comes to semi autos, first you unlock the M1 carbine. Now, the M1 carbine is a very special weapon in the game and I use it for that reason. Now it has 15 rounds. It has quite low damage. It has it has damage that's lower than normal semi-auto damage. It's basically assault rifle. It's a little bit lower than assault rifle damage. But it's quite fast and it has 15 rounds. And it's quite fast to reload. So the strategy with this weapon is basically you want short range engagements where you just shoot down your enemies with uh, with hip fire. Aiming with this is a pain because the sights are quite horrible. Now in real life they were much better because when you aim with them in real life you they are made in a way that you barely notice them. But the game doesn't display it. The game displays it not realistically, it displays just the sight, how it, uh, how it is on the weapon, not how your eyes would perceive it. So yeah, in real life it was much better. In the game these sights are a pain in the ass, especially the same thing goes, by the way, for the M1 Garand and M2 Carbine and the grenade launcher versions. But if you can, well, if you can get a little, bit, a little bit used to it, or if you just hip fire it so you don't have to see the sights, this becomes very potent. On short range, it's amazing. You can just spray down easily three to four enemies in a row. And since the damage is quite high, you have strong stopping power. Meaning, if you shoot an enemy with it, he, his body will start twitching and he won't shoot back. And even if he tries shooting back, he, he will just miss because his, his, his aim is going to get left, right, up, down. And this is one of the best effects of this weapon. Because you literally see if someone tries to shoot you one meter in front of you, he's going to miss. Yeah, <laughs> You just need one bullet into him and the rest of his bullets won't, miss, uh, won't hit you anymore. So yeah, very fun weapon, very cheap early in the campaign. Gives you a very distinct playstyle, because other campaigns can't have a weapon like this, where you just spray your 15 rounds. Absolutely amazing, and very underrated. Very underrated weapon. When I first used it, I hated it, because I the, the sides completely gave me eye cancer. But if you just use it with hip fire and sometimes by aiming, it becomes a very good weapon. Yeah, so this is worth it. This is really worth it. Now, still coming in a little bit later, very cheaply, M1 Garand, well, this is the king of semi-autos in the campaign because, yeah, sides are basically the same, but the damage is higher. This is the basically normal semi-auto damage, so you can, you, you one-shot everyone on close distance, and on mid-distance you one-shot most people, well, everyone without vitality. So yeah, and even on 20, 200 meter distance, the damage drop-off is small. This is a big advantage of this weapon. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's medium distance or further away, you still have enough firepower. You're still very fast and you have an 8-round magazine. Now, what's the 
way to choose between this and the M1 carbine? Well, it literally depends on what you want. If you like a fast hip fire play style, if you like rushing into enemies and just spraying bullets, the M1 carbine is much better. If you like to be more tactical uh, or more strategical and aim better and killing enemies from farther away, this is the way to go. Now, if you want to meta game, you obviously want to include the strategies your enemies are going to use. In this case, I'd personally play the M1 carbine above it because the weapons the enemy plays, the beginner rifles, well, they don't have a weapon like this. So on mid-range, the German, the German semi-autos are better because the Germans get a Gewehr 43, which is basically like an M1 carbine, but with 10 rounds and much faster reload. So when it comes to semi-auto versus semi-auto, the Germans are going to win. They're going to defeat you. But the Germans don't have anything that's even comparable to the, well, to the M1 carbine. And this is exactly the weapon that gives you an advantage. Also, this is a hybrid between, between semi-auto and SMG. So it has, it, has a, it has lots of great situations where you can just outpower your enemies. If you're up against bolt action enemies, this, is, this thing is going to win. On short range, it's going to always win. And if you're up against semi-auto enemies, uh, against SMG enemies, well, this is also going to win. <laughs> because because you did you are dealing more damage and you have much more stopping power. So yeah, my, my personal recommendation is use the M1 carbine if you want to have maximum power. But if you like it more, use the Garand. Oh, that's an enemy tank. Or, no, that's a... Oh, fuck. Now, later in the game, very late, you're gonna unlock the M2 carbine. This is the absolute king of Normandy weapons, when it comes to Americans. And generally, one of the best weapons in the game. The reason for that is the following. It is basically an assault rifle but it counts as a semi-auto, so you can give it to all of your normal soldiers. Yes, exactly. This is basically the FG-42 equivalent, also literally the FG-42 equivalent when it comes to level unlocking, the Americans get. And it, it's extremely strong. Yeah? The damage is only a little bit under assault rifle damage. The sh firing speed is ridiculously fast. This thing is literally faster than most German SMGs, than most of your SMGs, and than many machine guns in the game. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Reload speed is very low. Recoil is also low. The horizontal recoil is very small. You don't even notice it. And the vertical recoil is okay. As long as you aim a little bit down, you won't feel any recoil. And when you g if you give your soldiers vertical recoil reduction, it literally becomes basically no recoil. Yeah? And you can just spray into your enemies. This weapon, absolutely strong, absolutely amazing. And one of the main reasons why the Americans can actually overpower the Germans, even though they have STGs and FG-42s. Because, well, STGs only available for assaulters. FG-42s are available for everyone. But FG-42 is slower. You can't full auto it because the recoil becomes ridiculous. So you, if you want to be really good with an FG-42, you basically always semi-auto it. This thing, though, just sprays into groups. This thing turns every of your soldiers into an assaulter. Into a high-level assaulter, because you have an assault rifle. So yeah, this weapon is absolutely amazing. And the main reason the Americans have really strong firepower. Speed definitely pays off. Yeah, they may try to escape, but nope. Oh my god. How Regarding the SMGs, well, the Americans are in a very interesting position. In a very confusing position. Now, you start the game with your M3 this little grease gun. Now, this thing is... Well, it's very hated, but the hate isn't really... Well, <laughs> the hate isn't really required, because... As all beginner SMGs, it's not that strong. Yeah, it's not overpowered. This one is very slow, but it has a 
large magazine, especially for beginner weapons. It has very high damage on short range and it has basically no recoil. So as long as you use this weapon on short range, you can literally just headshot enemies by constantly spraying and never missing a single shot. Yeah, this weapon is amazing. And on mid range, well, the damage drop off is high, but since you have low recoil, you can still keep aiming at the heads. And even with 5.5 .5 damage on mid range, a headshot is always gonna kill them. So this thing is amazing. Make sure you use its strengths by aiming nicely and always spray. I recommend don't ever stop spraying with it because every single bullet can, can kill the enemy. So just keep spraying into the heads of the enemies. You're gonna hit often enough. And due to the low fire rate, well, <laughs> you want to spray because you never know when a bullet is gonna hit. Now, I don't recommend buying too many of them because early on you're gonna receive this thing. Oh well, obviously if you, depending on fast, how fast you unlock your squads and your squad assaulter slots, obviously get them more of them. What you also can do is, you can dual wield your assaulters, give them one of these and a bolt action so you have short range weapons and long range weapons. Now, once you unlock this, the second grease gun, you get a significant boost because this thing is much faster. Yeah? This shoots at 4, 470 per minute and this shoots at just 430. Now this additional fire speed change, you absolutely feel it. You definitely feel it and you really gonna, you, you're gonna see the difference. You're gonna see the difference and you absolutely need it because the only thing that's holding this SMG down is the slow fire rate. If it had a faster fire rate, it would be really strong because this high damage it's just, it's just too much. Yeah? This weapon, very underrated, you use it. I personally use it over everything that's not a Thompson. So until almost the end of the campaign, I was using them, especially over the two other SMGs. Now these two SMGs, why they're so bad? Very simple. The stand has horrible sights. It has horrible recoil. The horizontal recoil makes it impossible to control. And the damage is ridiculously low. By the way, look at this. It's a 6 star weapon with 6.6, 3.3 damage. If we compare it with our beginner, <laughs> with our basically beginner weapon, it just costs 4 stars, so the upgrade cost is, is negligible, and the damage is basically twice as much. Yeah, you see, the grease gun is just better than the damn stand. <laughs> and the Lanchester, well, Lanchester also extremely expensive. Damage is better than a grease gun, recoil is much better. So if you want an upgrade, it's worth getting the Lanchester. But the distance between the Thompsons and the Lanchester is so small that once again you're just gonna waste your silver because once you get the Thompsons, they are much better than Lanchester. So you rather want to play the Thompsons. Also for style reasons and for historical roleplay reason, I guess. So yeah, the, 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 the stand disqualifies itself by being very bad and being extremely overpriced. Lanchester disqualifies itself by being also extremely overpriced and just being worse than the next shortly incoming weapons. So yeah, these both two aren't really worth it. What about the shotgun? Well, the semi-auto shotgun is, well, it has semi-auto speed, basically, is really good. Now, well, no, I, I take it back. It's not really good. It's really good for fun reasons, but absolutely not good for playing reasons. The reason for that is only six rounds. It is, it shoots basically in real, like, it shoots faster than a normal bolt action, but, but, but slower than a semi-auto. And the biggest problem is the damage. Now, the, <laughs> the damage starts off extremely high and it drops off extremely low. So everything that's short is going to get one shot. Everything that's a little bit farther than short still dies, but everything that's, well, even remotely mid-range won't take basically any damage. So yeah, if this, if, if the 100 meter damage was still around 10, I would say it's more fun and better than a bolt action in short range. But these numbers are just horrible. Yeah, The, the M1 carbine literally is better than the, the Winchester. Because the, the M1 carbine is basically a complete upgrade 
the strategy is very similar but here you won't be able to kill more than even if you have the best aim in the world you won't be able to kill more than six enemies with the m1 carbine you can kill much more than six enemies even without hitting them really well on short range so yeah sadly the winchester just is just yeah it doesn't perform the damage drop off is too high but this isn't even the biggest problem biggest problem is the lack of exactly this little thing here you don't see it in the game <laughs> it doesn't have any sides except what you see is you just see a round surface so you can't even aim with it this is ridiculous like aiming with it is a complete pain and you barely can do it and the worst thing of it all it costs two silver because there's five stars so it, even like for a fun pure weapon that you can use for fun it's even over <laughs> over <laughs> overpriced so yeah this and by the way for the high damage you even need to pay the last upgrade so you don't even get the high damage without upgrading it first so yeah this thing is a trap you can use it for fun a little bit but that's it i'm using it for fun every six months so i used it so far one and a half times in my in my time playing enlisted and that was more than enough <laughs> yeah and now come the big tree the thompsons Now, these Thompsons have to compete with the German Berettas, some of which have really good stats. They either have good fire, good fire rate, good precision, 40 round magazines, or later they get the MP43 and the STG. So the competition is extremely hard. Now what do the Americans get? Well, the first Thompson you get, it has, well, this is amazing, it has basically grease gun damage. It has grease gun damage, but is 50% faster, has low recoil, and is fast to reload. So the, the Thompson is, even though it may sound like an insult, it's basically an upgraded grease gun. And this upgrade is absolutely worth it, because the, the fire rate changes it completely. Remember when I said in the beginning, if the grease gun was faster, it would be extremely strong? Yeah, this is exactly what you get with a Thompson. The only th disadvantage of the Thompson is the sights, because the sights, same thing as with the Garand, in real life they were much better, much more comfortable to use. In the game though, they are made in a horrible way and you barely can aim with them. This is the reason I don't play any Assaulters in Normandy. Now, there are three reasons I don't play them. A. I'd rather play the M2 Carbine on any other type of soldier than playing any of the Thompsons because the Carbine is just stronger. It's stronger, but it has the disadvantage of, well, bad sides, which the Thompsons also have. So the M2 Carbine is basically a strict upgrade over the Thompson, and you don't even need to play a specific assault or squad, you can put it into every single squad. So this means Normandy Americans is the only campaign where you can use a 9-man rifleman squad as a nine-man assault squad. <laughs> this is ridiculously funny. I don't use them like that, because it's not really fun for me. But if you want to power game, this is the way to go. You can just have nine-man assault squads. Now, if you still want to choose between the Thompsons, here's the guide. This first Thompson is... It's basically a stronger grease gun, as we already said. And what about the second Thompson? Well, this is the best Thompson. The reason for that is the following, it's ridiculously fast, very, very, very fast, and very low recoil, and everything else is the same. So this, and, yeah, this, this, <laughs> and this is the point. Being so fast while having just 30 rounds is a disadvantage in theory, yes, but for that reason you have semi-auto mode. So when you only have one enemy in front of you, you can switch to semi-auto and just kill him with two or one precisely, well, two <laughs> precisely said bullets. If you have a, more than one enemy in front of you, just spray into them. And if you have enemies on mid or long range, just change to semi-auto and start 
headshotting them or just precisely sniping them with your Thompson. This is the strategy you want to use. This is basically, like this weapon requires more thinking than the German STG because German STG is overall so much better you can always pray. I literally never think about it. If you take a look, I never think about it. I know I have ridiculous damage. I know I two shoot enemies always on mid range and I have no recoil and well the fire rate is low enough that even with complete full auto spray on any distance I'm still gonna hit the enemies <laughs> but and my sights are amazing <laughs> yeah but the, as an American you don't get this luxury situation as an American you actually have to be strategical about how you use it especially with the bad sights so yeah you want to adjust your your tactic depending on the distance of the enemy and the amount of enemies and the last Thompson well this is the good news you literally don't have to upgrade any Thompson's because this is actually worse than this now this gives you less fire rate which is theoretically an advantage because you don't need 950 but it gives you horrible recoil so yeah this by the way doesn't make any sense at all that you get less fire rate but increase horizontal recoil this is a complete waste so yeah like my guide if you want to have the best weapons and if you want to save silver orders get yourself well these lots of these and then wait until you unlock the m1 thompson and get yourself these thompsons Going into the heavy weapons, we have four machine guns, three different ways of blowing up tanks, and special spies like two flamethrowers and an inch mortar. Now, easiest thing is the mortar. Well, very simple, absolutely not worth it, because most objectives in the campaign are either in a bunker or in a building or hidden behind trees. So the effectiveness is extremely bad and everything that's on an open field most of the time has trenches. So yeah, the inch mortar is very, very bad in, in Normandy. It's possibly the worst campaign for mortars overall. Also, it's very weak, so not worth it. Now, a very special thing is the flamethrower because the first flamethrower you get extremely early. You get it at level 6. Because fire. Yep. Yep. Nice. Like the full, the building is full of them. Yeah. Come on. Level six is basically nothing. Like after a bunch of hours playing the game, you unlock flamethrowers. In other campaigns, you sometimes have to wait until level twenty. Now, these are absolutely worth it, and it doesn't really make much, too much of a dif difference whether you have the fl first flamethrower or the second flamethrower. Because the difference is very simple. The first flamethrower is having, well, is shooting the same damage. It's shooting, it's shooting shorter, just 18 meter, but it has 300 rounds. This is a display arrow. It has 300 rounds, not 200. The second flamethrower has actually only 200 rounds, but it shoots almost twice as wide away. Now this is a this is a trade-off, obviously. Do you want to shoot more rounds or more fuel, or do you want to shoot at enemies further away? After testing out both for a bunch of months, I can tell you it's always better to have the further shooting one, because flamethrowers, unlike other weapons, have complete, complete bullet drop-off, basically, because if the enemy is too far away, you don't deal any damage at all. <laughs> the only thing you can deal is trying to hide yourself in the flame, but any smart enemy still will identify where you are. So it's absolutely worth it being able to shoot enemies further away. So the second flamethrower obviously worth it. Also the second flamethrower squad obviously worth it since they have the best beginner perk in the game possibly of having additional vitality that you can combine with the normal vitality perk so they become much more durable. But yeah, the first flamethrower squad that you unlock at level 6 
will give you, well, the ability to clear out enemy trenches, enemy buildings, enemy fortifications, enemy bunkers. So all the fun that you've seen in movies actually works here and is very strong. Very strong. Now the other heavy weapons feature three ways of blowing up tanks. First, the Piot. Piot comes also very early. Comes very early at level 8. And the Germans get the Sturm Pistol, which is literally a pistol that has a <laughs> anti-tank head. And you can imagine how weak it is. This Piot is, well, in theory stronger. The armor penetration is 80 millimeters, so 8 centimeters, which is really good. But the problem is, A, aiming with it is bad. B, the effective distance, it has a minimum distance at which it works, and it has a maximum distance. And there's nowhere in the game written how, yeah, in which direction you actually have, or in which distance you have to use it. And it doesn't even fly straight. It, it basically gets thrown in an arc. Yeah, this is... Unlike the GRB, which is very similar, that has extremely high damage and good penetration and has weak tanks most of the time to blow up, this thing has to compete with stuff like Panzer IVs and Panthers and Tigers and it's literally just not worth it. It looks like a primitive bazooka, but it sadly isn't really strong, so I personally don't use it. Any TNT pack that you throw at a tank will be much better. Especially since this thing at longer ranges doesn't do anything at all. So yeah. On the other hand, once you get the bazooka... A little OP, maybe. Um, Around level 30. Extremely strong, but at least a strong upgrade. Because now you have a better reach. Now you have better read, now you can literally just shoot at tanks around 50 meters away and you can actually penetrate them. Even though penetration theory is lower, you still very often will deal damage. And if you shoot tanks from the side, which is what you should do with it, you will either blow it up with the first shot or you will deal. You will kill one or two crewmates and then you do another shot from the side or you shoot since after you, you damage the tank, you get a little icon on the right side of the screen that gives you a nice, well, nice view into the tank and then you can see where the ammunition is. And then you can just shoot at these areas and the tank is gonna blown up. But keep in mind, shoot at the sides of the tank, not from the front, from the front very hard to find the weak spots if the tank has any at all. And in the end you get the M9 bazooka, which is ridiculously good because it's just a straight upgrade over the previous bazooka. It shoots faster, it has more penetration and it flies for, it has basically more reach, more effective reach, so yeah, this is a really good thing, really strong, and many tanks you can even just kill with a straight shot from the front, even if you hit the well armored parts, not a tiger, but most of the tanks you just penetrate straight from the front, and if you shoot at something from the side, it blows up completely, so yeah, this is the king of your, your anti-tank guns, and you get it very late, the other bazooka you get also very late, at level 30. Yeah, sadly it takes a time, but in the meantime you get access to TNT packs and so on. Okay, he's busy chucking possible. Finishing the amount of heavy weapons, we do with the machine guns. Now the machine guns start with a complicated one. You get the Bren. The Bren, in theory, is, oh, is quite good. It has 30 rounds, which is really good for a beginner machine gun. It has, it's quite slow, though this is an upgrade, because you want to use the, pre, the first machine guns basically as better semi-auto rifles anyway. Yeah? Because as long as you don't have 50 rounds at least, spraying isn't really that good. Also, the sights are horrible because you only see these... Yeah, you basically get <laughs> Garand sights or M1, M2 carbine sights on a machine gun because you obviously can't aim through this thing here. So you have to aim through the side. The sights are horrible. Damage is standard machine gun damage. So I have to say the slow firing rate actually is a feature because it artificially redu reduces your recoil 
or at least re prevents it from going too hard because the slower you shoot the less effective recoil you're gonna have uh, but the best thing you want to do is just do one shots like one bullets every time and you get quite a nice damage so this is basically a better version of the m1 garand sides are basically the same though due to this magazine you your view is a bit obstructed damage is also very similar to the one of the garand on longer ranges it's even much better than the garand and it has more rounds 30 compared to 8 recoil is much better and you can full auto it so yeah no matter how bad the beginner machine guns are they are always always better than the semi autos that you get so it's absolutely worth it playing them and putting in a machine gunner squad in your army especially since you they can build heavy machine gun nests <laughs> in their squad is almost a no-brainer so yeah i recommend using them now after you suffered a while through this machine gun and pay two silver because they come quite late because you get this thing early you're gonna get the browning Now the browning, the first browning, very similar to the second, you can even see here it's almost the same weapon. The main difference is the sights. Now the, 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 the speed and recoil as you can see here, 600, 40, 15, and here we got 600, uh, almost the same, it's literally basically everything is the same. The difference are the sights. Now these sights are significantly, significantly better than these. Because these, as you can see in the clip, exactly, they have an open sight. These are closed and much easier to aim with. Much easier to, to aim with for most players. I can tell you from experience, most say these are better. So yeah, this is, well, question, is it worth it buying it? Well, here comes the thing. This costs more silver. And in order to get the, the damage upgrade, you actually have to pay for the six stars. So what I did, I played this. Once I got access to this, I got me this here. And then I just kept using this. If you get used to these sides, just play the Bren over the Browning. Because apart from the sides, the Browning is actually better. Like Depending on how you play it, the Browning is better. Uh, sorry, the Bren is better. The Browning is better for spraying. Because the recoil is slower, it's faster, but the Bren is better for using it as a semi-auto, and this is actually how you want to use it. If you're waiting for a machine gun to actually spray, well, wait until very late. <laughs> wait until level 35, because here you get the last browning, and this browning is one of the most overpowered weapons in the game. They shouldn't be able to mess with us with the uh, phosphorus grenades. Absolutely no doubt. Reason is, you get 100 rounds. Yes. You get 100 rounds, you get basically no vertical recoil and quite slow fire rate. So this thing actually is gonna hit everything you shoot at. The only disadvantage it has is the high horizontal recoil, but even that is okay. Yeah? Now if you prone it, you get basically a laser that shoots in a very comfortable speed, meaning you can actually headshot enemies, groups of enemies, or you just, if your enemies are in front of you, you just spray into groups of enemies and everyone's gonna die. Now the damage is ridiculous, the damage is really good and it's fast enough to kill, well, Two, three squads in a row without reload that are in front of you. It's absolutely amazing. Also very fun to use and extremely cool looking. This is one of the best weapons in the game and absolutely a reason to play Americans if you want strong weapons because this is the best machine gun in the game. There's no machine gun that even compares to it. Going over to the tanks. There's a general rule. If you use tanks, always level up the first crew, give them all of the technology and upgrades and perks you can get, because 
once you get your second tank crew, the Tanker 2s at level 20, which is quite a long time away, you can just put in your perfectly, your perfectly trained level 1 tankers into this new tank and they will already have the plus 100% experience perk. Same thing goes for all infantry squads too. So whenever you get a new squad, don't use the new soldiers, use the old ones for much faster leveling. This is going to reduce your grind significantly. Significantly. And out of experience I can also tell you, most people bitching about the grind, they don't use this trick. Yeah? The grind sucks really in this game. But if you, just, if you just apply the tricks that the game gives you access to for free, the grind becomes much better. Much, much better. So yeah, always use these, new, these old tanker crews for your new tanks. And well, we already talked about this first starter tank, which is really good for the beginning. Now the next tank you're gonna get is the M8 Scott at level 10. And this tank, as many American tanks, has a disadvantage of an open... Yes of an open roof, but it comes with quite a big punch, it has a howitzer. Now, it has basically, it has, mm, yeah, not the, not the best front armor, and basically no side armor. Basically no means a storm pistol could penetrate it, so, yeah, you wanna, you wanna be careful not to get flanked. Well, as long as you survive, you have a really strong, you have a really strong heavy machine gun. And you have a really strong little howitzer. So yeah, this thing is worth it if you like dealing large amounts of damage. And if you like to be mobile and tactical, because you always can reposition yourself. You can always drive away. It's extremely fast. Extremely fast. So yeah, this tank is also, for those who like to outmaneuver the enemy, their enemies, very effective. Now the next tank you receive is the M4A2. Yes, Americans don't know how to name weapons because everything sounds similar. Now, this tank comes with much better armor. Much more. You can actually survive hits. And it's actually a pain in the ass to fight this because look at this. Look at this giant bacon of steel it has on its belly. It's ridiculously thick. You can't penetrate it. It's absolutely ridiculous. This also way too much steel to penetrate from the front. The only weakness actually is its, well, its hull armor here on the side, 40 millimeters. This turret here also, you can see, so much steel, 50 millimeters. Yeah, this is much safer and it even has a roof that, that doesn't invite any molotovs or phosphor grenades from the enemies in. So yeah, this is the first, I would say, proper tank because it has a really good cannon. Really, good. It has basically the same cannon the Panther has. That comes much later. It has a heavy machine gun and it has a normal machine gun. It's still very fast. Like, it's faster than the German tanks. Even the much heavier German tanks. But also than the fast German tanks. And good armor. So yeah, this is a really, really good boy. Will always be reliable. And now, big surprise. The best, the absolutely best American tank in the game. And in the campaign, obviously comes extremely early, it comes level 20, yes, right before you, you start leveling up with the high 18, uh, 180,000 experience, still with 144,000 experience, you get the Jumbo. I have not seen Panzer in a minute. Oh, that was a good one. And now you're gonna see why it's the best American tank. This thing here is basically indestructible. Now, remember what I said about the bacon of the previous tank? Look at this. Look at this. This is over 10 centimeters. This is 15 centimeters of steel defending you. And by the way, this, this machine gun port doesn't even count because you can't shoot inside. It's too small. The only weakness this thing has is this little machine gun port. And this little backside part, if you manage to penetrate it perfectly, or this part. Besides these two little areas, it's indestructible. Yes, this thing is literally a moving fortress. And no matter which weapon the, the Germans use, no matter which tank they use, they won't be able to destroy it. Unless they shoot, usually it only gets killed by a perfectly placed... By a perfectly placed 
TNT pack on top of it or under it. As every tank dies from basically. Or by a good tank or Panzerfaust shot into this little area. Sometimes Panzerfaust shots into this side also work. But besides that, it, it's, it's you, you really have to go out of your way and do lots of work in order, as a German player in order to blow up this thing. And now comes the best advantage. Everything I said works only from very short range with very good aim. Or if you have a strong tank from far away. Meaning, as long as you use this thing at a healthy distance. Some people may call it grey zone. But I'm not even talking about grey zone noobing. I'm talking about just keep your distance. Keep a nice tactical logical distance. And enemies won't hurt you. Now how do you use this thing? Very simple. You stay far away enough. And you use your really good cannon. To just shell high explosives into enemies. And since the game recently especially experienced a really nice influx of new players and many of them try to be chats as the Axis soldiers defending Normandy, you're gonna see lots of Pumas, the, the first German tank, which is basically an armored car because it has six wheels instead of, instead of tracks. You're gonna blow them up with one shot. Now, literally, you're gonna blow them up. You, it doesn't even matter if you use high explosives. Or anti-tank shells. You just blow them up. <laughs> you slap them away. And all the infantry around them. You also slap them away. You have more than enough ammunition. And if you like playing D-Day maps. D-Day and Vesumer. You just spawn this thing. Of course after building a rally. And then you just sit in the background. And just shell the bunkers with high explosives. So everyone in the bunker dies. You shell next to the bunkers. So everyone defending the bunker dies. And then you shell behind the bunker. So everyone hiding there and their ready points get blown up and then you capture. Yeah, this thing is absolutely amazing. The best American tank. Now for those who wonder why are the next tanks worse? Well, they just have less armor. Then all the next tanks have better cannons but worse armor. And you literally don't need better cannons because you can, you can destroy Panthers with it, with a good aim. You can destroy everything under the panther with one shot just frontally with the cannon the only like the only tanks you can compare is the tiger and pant a good panther player so the two highest german tanks are the only tanks able to even remotely touch this thing anything else can't even do anything absolutely nothing so the enemies are forced to basically use planes to deal with you but unless they hit really well they won't blow you up <laughs> because you're still too thick. Look at this thick boy. So yeah, this jumbo is amazing. If you don't believe me, try it out. I couldn't believe it myself. I don't really like tank noobing, but this thing is just so much fun because you know, once you whip it out, the enemies have to blow you up because otherwise they just can't do anything. So yeah, this is absolutely amazing. Now the next tanks, this is also good, new this is also good news for players. You don't really have to play or grind them. They're literally just not important. You get the tanker tree. With a really cool modern looking tank by the way. It features sloped armor. Which is great. Now. This by the way. This 50 is in real in reality more. Because it's sloped. So from the front not easy to destroy. But you can. You see already this is a weak spot. This is a very bad weak spot. <laughs> and. The sides are basically non-existent. They are literally, they have nothing. And the back is also not defended. If you remember, the Jumbo had like 80 back. The Jumbo has more front armor than this thing. Uh, the Jumbo has more backside armor than this thing has here on the front. It's ridiculous. yeah. And the backside is even sloped from the Jumbo. So yeah, this tank has a stronger cannon. Stronger, It's longer and has a bigger radius and the ammunition is a bit, bit different. Yeah, so this thing blows up enemies better. You can actually fight tigers with it if you shoot, if you aim well. But, well, it's much easier to destroy. The thing is, the Jumbo can actually compete with a tiger. If you destroy the cannon and then kill the repairing crew. This thing can 
much easier just destroy a tiger by normal shooting at it. But it, but you still will have to aim well. You still need to hope the tiger isn't angled to get more additional armor or virtual armor. And, well, the worst problem is the tiger player doesn't have to think. He's gonna one-shot you, no matter where he hits, basically. As long as he hits somewhere here, which is easy, you're gonna die. So, ironically enough, although this tank has a much better cannon, it's worse against tigers. And overall, not worth it because everything kills it, especially this open roof, meaning every any German player who wants to have fun throws a phosphor into you or molotov or a normal frag grenade. Yeah, this is f funny. These are basically the only tanks in the game that you can kill with frag grenades. This is a high level tank, very strong cannon, very valuable, but dies against the frag grenade, so yeah. Not really worth it. Now, the next tank, one of the last ones you get, well, this is basically an upgraded version of the previous tanks. This features, and a much better version of the directly previous tank, it features similar cannon, really strong, features two machine guns, one small, one heavy, and first and foremost, a closed roof. Yes, Americans finally remembered to build tanks that aren't molotovable easily, and well, the previous tanks, by the way, weren't meant to be on the front line. That's why they had open roofs. Yeah, they, 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 this tank though can go quite deep next front to the enemy, and you have really good armor. You have sloped armor here, so the only weak spot from the front is actually the turret because it's it's basically straight, vertical, so no slopeness. Here you have really good slopeness, and the sides for the turret are also quite well, but the sides of the hull are once again, very easily penetrated by anything. And the backside is also quite weak. So you see, this is the same theme. Stronger cannon than the Jumbo, but the armament is just much, much weaker. And then eventually, in the end, you get the newest addition to the campaign. The basically self-propelled gun, self-propelled artillery. And this thing has also a very strong cannon. Although theoretically same cannon as one of the previous tanks, it's overall stronger shooting. As a trade-off it has less ammunition. And as a basically self-propelled artillery, it doesn't have any armor at all. It looks like it has armor, but it doesn't. Look at the numbers. <laughs> this is weaker than possibly any starter tank in the game. I think it's actually less armor than any starter tanks in the game. It doesn't have any armor at all. Normal storm pistols just penetrate it instantly and kill your crew. So you need to stay out of enemy line. You basically are forced to play in the gray zone. And yeah, open roof as an additional disadvantage. So yeah, this tank isn't really worth playing. Uh, but by the way, it's not a bad thing. Because if every new tank would be an upgrade to the previous tank, it would cause power creep. This here though... As playing as an American, you don't have you you basically don't have power creep in tanks, because you start with a very strong one, and then you get the best tank in the campaign, except for the Tiger at level 22, and then anything else doesn't matter. So this is a really good campaign for new players and low level players if you want to have fast access to good things. There's a lot of them up there. Now, when it comes to planes, you're also in a very luxurious position as an American because you have very strong planes, very strong planes, and you get them early. Level 4, you get a Bugs Bunny plane, a fighter pilot. Fighters, by the way, if you actually want to participate in the game, are better than bombers or attackers. Same thing, bomber attacker. Because usually the bomber plane slot is taken, it's very often taken. So, if you have a fighter slot, it's much more likely that you can actually take the plane, especially take it at any time, because very often it's going to be open. Another big reason, the best vehicle in the whole game, which is a plane, is an American plane from Normandy, and it's an attacker plane, and I strongly recommend using it constantly, because this is the strongest firepower you can have as an American, and this slot is going to be taken most of the time constantly. So, playing fighters... As an American, really, really recommend it. Now, 
Obviously, as long as it has enough firepower, because playing fighters to shoot down enemy planes uh, enemy, yeah, isn't really that impactful and not that strong. It doesn't work very often in the game. So you want fighters that can actually attack the ground. Now, the starter plane, right from the start you get a plane that in other campaigns would be the level 35 unlock, because this is ridiculously strong. You get a, you get a 20mm cannon. 20mm cannons are the things that can one or two shoot enemy planes. So whenever you see a cannon, you know two hits, maximum two hit, three hits and the enemy plane is gone. And you get four heavy machine guns. Heavy machine guns, much worse than cannons, but still much better than normal machine guns. So, like the 7mm ones. So yeah, the biggest advantage, they are all in, a, in the same area. The worst thing could be uh, two machine guns here and two machine guns here, and then you can only hit with one of them. <laughs> yeah. But this here focuses and concentrates your firepower on one point or one area, and this just shreds through enemy planes. If you want to blow up enemy planes, this is extremely good. And you get six rockets. These rockets aren't very strong, but they're still, still strong, and you can blow up lots of infantry and even tanks with them. So yeah. Also, r learning how to use rockets is very easy. It took me literally, I don't know, 5 to 10 games. Learning how to bomb took me many dozens of games, so yeah. <laughs> or a couple dozens of games. So yeah, rockets are the easiest to handle things in the game. And yeah, this is a very strong one. This is a very strong and good plane, and you get it right from the beginning. Strongly recommend using it. Also, there's basically... If you, if you want to make the comparison between tanks and vehicles, if you only got one vehicle slot, let's say you have to choose between a tank and a plane, always take the plane. Because this tank, even though I praised him a lot, will get one shot by the late level enemy tanks. This thing though, can one, can one shot the strongest late game German planes and it can blow up basically all the uh, German tanks too if you if you land your rockets well and shred for the planes in addition. Also with this cannon and the heavy machine guns you also can kill lots of infantry on the ground. So this is much much stronger than the tank. This is basically late game firepower that you get right from the beginning of the game. Absolutely strong, very recommended. Now a little bit later you get your well, fighter pilot too. And this thing features a typical American look. Very silvery, lots of stars, and well, instead of rockets it has two light bombs. Light bombs aren't that great because if you land them perfectly on a tank you can blow up most tanks, but not the heavy ones. You have four machine guns, heavy machine guns, but they are on the wings, so the fire isn't focused on one area, which also isn't that good. So yeah. This fighter, over, although it's l better at flying, has much less firepower than the one at level 4, so I, I don't really recommend using this plane I itself. And the previous one, much better. Now, if we get a little bit later, we finally unlock at level 18 the attacker pilot 1. And this bad boy features, <laughs> features a lot. It features 6 heavy machine guns placed in the frontal area, meaning you, you have focused fire on one area. These things shred through enemy planes, very strong, and they shred through infantry that's in the ground. Also, you have heavy machine guns in the background, so once you unlocked your additional crew members, even if you can just fly next to enemy planes, and your crew members are gonna shoot them down. This is really good, really good. Now, this firepower isn't even the last thing they have. They have four heavy bombs. Four 250 kilogram or 500 pound bombs. Extremely good bombs. Extremely good bombs. Four of them, usually if you have one of them, it's already okay. If you have two of them, it's good. But having four of them is ridiculously overpowered. This attacker plane is literally ridiculously strong. It's so strong, it's the last upgrade, it's the last unlock in the Tunisian campaign. Just absolutely overpowered, and you get it at level 18. Yeah, absolutely amazing, absolutely strong. Now, if you wait a bit, you get this plane. Now this plane, well, 
this plane is a little pre-taste for what you get eventually later. It features, once again, the machine gun, uh, the auto cannon for machine guns and rockets. Now it's basically as the other fighter, but it has it has a better maneuverability. So it flies better. It's basically a strict upgrade over the first plane that you get. It just flies better. It flies better, but has the same firepower. Now, uh, so it's not that not noteworthy. If you upgraded your first plane, I would keep it. I wouldn't bother wasting silver and bronze on. I wouldn't bother wasting bronze on this because upgrading vehicles is extremely expensive. And B, you're gonna get the best vehicle in the game very soon. Meaning, one, two, three. Three levels! Oh! This is where the fun begins and you're gonna look exactly like this fox. Level 27, you unlock the P47, very easy to remember. And this is a pure beast. It looks like a World War 1 plane. But don't be fooled, it's extremely strong. It's extremely strong. The reason for that is the following. Not only do you get eight heavy machine guns, eight heavy machine guns, sadly featured on the wings, but it's okay. You can still shred infantry, you can still shred planes, and you can also still shred infantry on the ground. But here comes the highest firepower. You get 10 high VAR rockets. These are ridiculously strong. These are the rockets, and they are absolutely strong. And you get 10 of them. Now, these rockets, as you can see in the footage, you just spray on the ground. You don't even need to, to focus them, because other rockets are so weak, you actually need to focus them on a single tank, for example. Here, one rocket is enough to blow up a tank. And having a bunch of them is enough to blow up any tank in the game, even the Tiger, without any issues. And if you manage to spray them around the battlefield, you're gonna just kill everything. And on top of it, you still have a heavy bomb. And this heavy bomb sometimes just kills the rest. Everyone who survived the first round of rockets and the heavy machine gun spraying is gonna die from the bomb. Yes. And the funniest thing is, sometimes if a plane tries to kill you and flies behind you, dropping this bomb, by exploding the bomb, the plane behind you is gonna get very often gonna get caught in the blast radius and will lose control over his plane and then crash and you get a kill for the plane too. So yeah, this is absolutely strong. This is the strongest vehicle in the game and yeah, there's no comparison. The firepower of the rockets is just overpowered as hell and it's also easy to fly. Literally, I could fly it right, right from the beginning. Other planes I had to learn, this thing I instantly works. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, the best vehicle in the game. And, well, remember what I said about fighter planes? Well, this attacker slot is going to be taken very often, but don't worry, you get this thing here. Now, I personally, in my army, use one jumbo and two planes, so I can always take the jumbo when it's needed, and I can always take one of the planes when I want to. And this fighter plane is, well, amazing. It looks really cool, has a silvery, well, design is nice, looks cool, and it has, well, six heavy machine guns. Sadly, once again, on the wings, but uh, you can't have everything. But there's still six heavy machine guns, and you get two heavy bombs. And that's that is good. Now, this is basically a straight upgrade over the previous fighters. The previous fighters had cannons. This, well, in terms of shooting down enemy planes, from this pure firepower, it's not that strong, but it's quite well to, nice to fly. But in terms of uh, b b ground destruction, the two heavy bombs just are wonderful. Yeah, they're absolutely wonderful. And yeah, you can shred through everything on the ground too. These bombs can destroy Tiger tanks. So yeah, if you want to play only basically vehicles or p air uh, planes, you can just cycle through the two planes. You can cycle through this plane and the attacker plane, and then you're gonna have ridiculous firepower. Absolutely ridiculous firepower on the ground. Now, for those wondering, what about gold order vehicles? Well, first of all, this is how it works. You click on a vehicle, and here you see the 
the group, the squad that you ha need to have to use it. For example, this is 69th tank battalion. Let's take a look. Where do we find it? We find it exactly in the beginning. So yeah, this tank you can use right from the start. Now, remember this was not a too strong, but also not a weak one. But instead, if you want, you can get this from the beginning. And here you get a much stronger cannon. Actually, you get one of the strongest cannons. You get a medium strong cannon. Basically the same cannon as the Jumbo. You get heavy machine guns, normal machine gun, and you get lots of armor. So yeah, if you want to have, a, if you love playing tanks, this is, re you, I, re I recommend getting this because you can use an extremely strong tank. The only tank this gets outshadowed by is the Jumbo. Because the Jumbo is basically a strict upgrade. But if you don't want to wait until level 20, get yourself this tank, it's really worth it. Now, this tank you can unlock only very late. And I can tell these two tanks are basically the same as the as the last real tank you get, or the second last tank overall, but they cost a gold order. So yeah, these two gold order vehicles are basically are not worth it. This, if you want to save time, is really worth it. Now regarding planes, this plane you can get at level 12 and with the squatter from level 12. And if you like flying planes, I really recommend this. Because it's basically the, the fighter plane that you unlock very late, like past level 30. It has the same, it's literally the same plane, it has the same weapons, same bombings, and but you get it level 12. So yeah, if you like playing fighter planes, this is worth a, tr worth a try. Now, this thing you get at level either 16 or 18, or you can use it with level 16 or 18. Yeah, this is, <laughs> once again, less worth it though, because... Not that, if you wait a little bit, not too far later, you're gonna unlock, well, you're gonna unlock, <laughs> you're gonna unlock, yeah, you're gonna unlock this squad, but uh, you also unlock this, by the way, yeah, this is the point, you unlock the same plane, this is literally the same plane as the Gold Order version, so it's not really worth it. This is just a, uh, well, a little bit Frenchier version, so yeah. Not worth it, to sum up. This is worth it if you like playing tanks, and but it's gonna be obsolete once you get a Jumbo. This thing, though, is worth it until the very end of the campaign, because there's no better fighter plane. So among all of the Gold Order vehicles, I recommend using this, because this never loses its value. Never loses its value. If I started, would start a campaign, I would buy this myself. And for the end, we're gonna do a quick campaign progression, so you have an overall picture of what's going on. Well, in the beginning, you start with your normal assaulter, rifleman, sniper, and tank squad. And then you unlock the engineers. Extremely important. Highly recommend using them. Because A, as an American, you're attacking most of the time. And B, well, you can't attack without lots of rally points. Having access to the engineers very early on with a really good bolt action rifle, basically with the, as you found out, best bolt action rifle, is really worthwhile. Really worthwhile, so yeah, use the squad. Also, having access to machine guns, anti-air guns, and anti-tank, uh, not machine guns, at engineer ones, but anti-tank guns, really worth it because you can penetrate most German tanks from the side with one shot. And many of them you can even kill from the front, straight ahead, with two or three shots. So yeah, this engineer squad, the most important squads the, Amer the squad the Americans have. Literally the most important squad, because as an attacker you need everything this squad gives you. Now about the vehicles we already talked a lot. You're gonna get your M1 carbine really early. You're gonna get your fighter plane very early, which gives you lots of firepower. So if you want to be sure you can carry a team alone, use the engineers. Use one engineer in every single squad obviously, so every squad can build a rally. The general rule is, if you want to be a good player, always make sure you have a ready point built for the current objective. Now, this, if you want to <laughs> destroy enemies, if you want to kill grey zone tanks especially, also recommendable. This tank is really fun to play, but on many maps you can't really use it. 
due to the map design because you can't you can't just drive around or you can't flank enemy tanks but well in the air there's always space and you could always fly towards your enemy tanks and just blow them up with your rockets now flamethrowers also very useful in many situations very strong also a flamethrower is one of the strongest weapon overall in the game and the fact that you can use the strongest weapon in the game at level 6 also a clear no-brainer that you use them right from the start now radio operator the squad itself isn't really worth it uh, radio well you don't you only need one radio operator in any squad to be able to call artillery strikes so you literally don't need the squad itself air raids with the bombers are also extremely overrated they were before the bombing runs and now they are especially overrated, so I never use them. Secret tip though, if you like using f sniper squads, just use a radio squad as a sniper squad. You literally play them the same way, you stay in the background and snipe, but you are t your radio squad can call strong artillery strikes every couple minutes, which your sniper squad can't. So yeah, they are basically the stronger sniper squad in the game. Not many people understand this, but now you do. Level 8, you get the, well, anti-tank gunner. I personally would play machine gunner, snipers or anything above the anti-tank soldier if it only has a pilot. So this squad can be quite ignored. Now, well, this, the better, mach the, the better grease gun, absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth the buy and upgrade since you're going to use it for lots of levels. Really recommend it. Now, Normandy is the only campaign I don't use assaulters. Only early on when I still don't have many squads to choose from. If you like using assaulters though, absolutely play the grease gun. Absolutely play the grease gun and get yourself the grease guns. Now this tank, obviously an upgrade over the first tank and you gladly take it. Machine gun has also said, really worthwhile, increases your firepower by a lot. Especially since you can build heavy machine gun nests. And by the way, many German tanks are penetrable with machine gun nests. The Puma for example, you can penetrate from all sides. And some other tanks you can penetrate from the side. So yeah, machine gun nests are really, really surprisingly strong in Normandy. And this, well, fighter pilot. Yeah, this is the, this is the, mm, a little bit disappointing one. Same thing goes for the mortar squad. Completely disappointing. But still, you get four soldiers and you can just take their TNT packs <laughs> and their med packs from them. And give it to other soldiers, which is what I always do with, with squads I don't use. Then you get a sniper 2 squad. If you have the slots to upgrade, it's worth it upgrading it. So you have two different... If you really like sniping, it's worth it. So you upgrade them and you have two different kinds of sniper rifles you can switch from. And you have the obviously up perked snipers. But if you want to save time and silver it's and bronze, it's just, it's just enough to play the first sniper squad. So yeah, I... Personally, didn't really upgrade them. Now, then, you get another tank, also, once again, worth the upgrade, because it's just the best tank, best tank you get until now. So, yeah, every time you get a new tank, as basically always the case, always take the new tank. Very rarely in this game, you don't want to take the new tank in the early levels. Yeah, the shotgun we already talked about is, you can have a bit fun with it, but don't expect too much. Now, Rifleman 2... The most important upgrade, besides the, the besides the first plane, I would say, because A, you get Rifleman 2s, which you're gonna play for a long time, and B, you get the grenade launcher. It's really do much. Hey. Copy. Now these grenade launchers have all the advantages a normal carbine has, together with the fact that you can <laughs> spam grenade launch, uh, uh, rifle grenades. These make a complete difference when you play against, for example, bunkers. Because if there's a group of enemies hidden in a the bunker, they can easily shoot you, but you can't easily shoot them. And for most people it's also very hard to actually throw a grenade into a bunker, even if you're good at aiming, it's still hard. But, 
With a grenade launcher, it's much easier to, hit, to shoot a grenade into the bunker and everything's gonna die. And the best thing is, if you dual wield them, you have 5 plus 1 of them. Basically 5, sometimes 6, depending on how you use them. So you're gonna have lots of grenades to just eliminate your enemies. This is extremely, extremely strong. I highly recommend using them. And they're the easiest way to level up new squads, because what you do is, you take out, you take your rifleman, and let's say you get a new squad, some squad from level 30 or something, you put, you take out every soldier from the squad and put in your leveled up, perked up rifleman 2s with two grenade launchers, and now you have a squad that you can always rush in, get quickly lots of kills and lots of experience, and this is how you level up squads fast, especially new squads. That is what I always do with new squads. And yeah, even though the squad only will have three or four or five soldiers, you still have lots of firepower. And then you get, well, you get a really good attacker plane. Now, in most, as I said, in most campaigns, this would be the most overpowered campaign, uh, overpowered plane you can imagine. The only reason this isn't the highlight of the American army is the next attacker plane. But yeah, this is also very strong. And then you get the, the first really, well, the really good or like more comfortably usable machine guns, but they are not really worth the price. And here this next big highlight, the Jumbo, the best tank in the campaign for the Americans. Absolutely use it. Use it, I recommend it over any other tank in the campaign. Then, well, Sniper 3, absolutely not worth it. In my experience, you rather have the normal sniper weapons. If you, if you are a hardcore sniper player, you can go through the pain of leveling up the Sniper 3 squad. Which I currently do is with my German army because I never bothered to do it. But then I noticed, yeah, maybe I should try out the Sniper FG42. So yeah, but it's not, it's not really worth your time. Just rather spend your time leveling up other squads. Then you get Assault R2. Once again, a big trap for many players. They invest time and lots of orders in this squad. As almost always, Assault R2 are not worth it because you get Assault R3. And here, additionally, the weapon is also not good. So, <laughs> yeah, this is a complete useless squad. It's not worth using it. The complete difference, though, is the level 23 squad with the M2 carbine. Not only do you get Engineer 2, which, which gives you, although more expensive, gives you access to a machine gun squad, a machine gun nest that you can build. And in the near future, I assume also additional upgrades, because currently they're not that much better than Engineer 1's. And the Engineer 2 soldier also isn't worth playing over or buying over Engineer 1 because you, you literally can't get better perk combinations. This is the, basically the only soldier in the game that doesn't get better perk combinations in the previous iteration. So yeah, it's in a very tight spot, but you still want to level up the squad because obviously the machine gun nest advantage and the M2 carbine, which is the best weapon the Americans get overall. The last machine gun with 100 rounds obviously is stronger, but you can give this thing to every soldier, so yeah. This is absolutely worth it. Also very fun to play once every soldier in your army turns into an assaulter, basically. Well, then you get this plane where he said it's it's good, definitely not bad, also an upgrade. Then you get your machine gunner 2 squad. This squad is in the same position as the assaulter 2 squad, it's not worth upgrading. This weapon, very expensive, costs 3 silver. Machine guns require the last star, the 6 star upgrade, because otherwise their damage is too low. And this is just a waste of orders. Just a waste of orders, because you A, you get machine gunner trees very later, and B, this isn't really an upgrade over the previous weapon. So yeah, this here, here you can save your time once again. The Lanchester, if it would cost 2 silver, I would recommend it to everyone, because you still have some time to wait until you get a good Thompson. But it costs as much as a Thompson, and well, if you have enough, more than enough silver, I recommend getting it. But and if you also want to level up the assault tattoos, because you need to level them up in order to level this one up. But if you just want to be efficient and save your time, you just forget about it. It's not really worth it. Then already best squad possibly in the game, the strongest plane and vehicle, ridiculously overpowered. I already said, play it, absolutely play it. Then Flamer 2, well, as usual, Flamer 2s are very painfully slow to upgrade because they require lots of experience. If you don't believe me, look at this. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, well, 
Yeah, it did take a long, did take a, trust me, it take around 20,000, 19,000 to 20,000 experience for the first level that you upgrade. Yes, and then they take ridiculously much more. So, yeah, they take a long time to level up, but they come with additional vitality. Then you give them vitality on top of it, and then you have almost unkillable soldiers. And they give you the strongest flamethrower you can get, so yeah, absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth the time. Also, with all of the time that you're gonna save, from what I'm saying here, you're gonna have so much more time, so much more silvers. Guess why I have so many silvers? Because I rarely use them. Most of the weapons in the game I don't even play. Yeah, because they're not worth it, I see they're not worth it. This, though, is absolutely worth it. This first Thompson, well... This first Thompson, also not worth it for many reasons. A, you get very quite soon a better Thompson. And B, you need to level up the Assault Tattoo Squad to get this to 6 stars. With low stars, it's not really good. With low stars, it's just worse than a Grease Gun. And yeah, like this is it has the same problem as the Lanchester. Overpriced and lots of hassle in order to use it, not worth it. But now we get the highlight. The highlight of level 30, the M1 Bazooka. Finally you get a weapon that actually blows up enemy tanks. Absolutely worth it, absolutely strong and very fun to use. I recommend you planning ahead in the previous squads. For example, in this squad, make sure you open up a slot for the Bazooka dude. And I also recommend using anti-tank gunners once you reach the last levels in every single squad because they are absolutely worth it and you absolutely want to be able to blow up enemy tanks. Then, well, tanker 3, well, you can just save your time. You can literally save your time, you don't need a tank as I already explained. And the tanker 3 squad also not really worth it. You can't even put a jumbo into the squad to, yeah, to, to help level up faster. No, you simply have to use this tank. And it's not really worth it. It's not really worth it. And now, finally, the really good assaulters, the assaulter trees, with a really good perk. Because this perk, absolutely worthwhile. Absolutely worth it. And with a really good SMG. Now, this Thompson's already said, the best Thompson variation, the best overall SMG that you get for Americans. And if you like assaulters, use the squad level up, make it very strong, and you're gonna have an amazing squad. Now, Rifleman 3, usually I always recommend to get them, because the anti-tank grenade launcher is better than the normal anti-infantry grenade launcher. The funny thing is, against infantry they have basically the same effect, but this also can penetrate tanks. Now, usually, it's the same rifle. For example, for Germans, you get a Kar-98 with grenade launcher, and then later you get a Kar-98 with anti-tank grenade launcher. Here, though, you have two different weapons. You have A, in the beginning, the M1 carbine, and here you get the Garand. So, what's more important here, once again, is what you like more. I personally like the M1 carbine more, so I just use the M1 carbine grenade launchers over these. If you want to power play and you like the grenade, uh, the, like the grant, and you have lots of silver, it can be worth it leveling up these, these soldiers and leveling, getting your grants to all your soldiers. But if you want to be efficient, this is a great opportunity to save a lot of time and a lot of orders and just to not use it and use the M1 carbine instead. The Germans though don't have this luxury situation. There you really want to have the anti-tank grenade launcher because all of the weak side armors from the American tanks, they really invite you to spam anti tank grenades into them. And then finally you get the best fighter plane. If you didn't get the gold order version much earlier, at level 12, absolutely worth it. Very nicely looking plane, I use it constantly and also very strong. And this is the big highlight. This is the last, by the way, this is the one of the last big up highlights the Americans get. The machine gunner tree squad. Well, Machine Gunner 3, better than the other Machine Gunners. Why? In order to play Machine Gunners, you want to have them... Well, I have it on Germans only. You want to give them this perk distribution. They need to have 16, 16, 22. 16 for fast running, because they are slow as hell. 16 for vitality, so they actually survive. And now the most important thing, this one doesn't have it. <laughs> Because I was a noob when I leveled him up. 
This one also doesn't have it, or he can't get it. So let's find a proper one. Yeah, this one has it. 14 recoil plus 8. This gives him recoil reduction, so you get much more control over your weapon, and faster reload speed. You can get this only with 22 yellow. If you're lucky, you can get this with a machine gunner too also, but you need to buy like 10 soldiers to get one soldier who has 16, 16, 22. With a machine gunner tree, it's much easier. Much, much easier. You're going to save lots of silver on your machine gunner. So yeah, you really want a machine gunner tree and you want to level him up anyway because you get the best machine gun in the, com in the whole game and you want to have it on six stars, obviously. Also, the perk is also great. Plus 100% health restored, same as Assault. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really strong. Really strong and also fun to use. Absolutely great per squad. And unlock. This unlock, though, you can just ignore once again because, yeah, it, it's overall it's a great tank, but the Germans get the Tiger. So, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna lose this battle and you're gonna lose it against Panthers. Overall, the Jumbo is just better. Now, another nice surprise. A tank, anti tank gunner 2 with bazookas. Absolutely worth it. Everything the, the previous bazooka lacks, this is, ha this is just a better version. So, yeah, you really want to... Well, use the bazookas. Best thing is, you don't need to level up the squad, because bazookas don't have stars. So you can't level them up, meaning they are always at full power when you buy them. So you don't need to, you don't need to progress through any technology, which is very comfy. Also, as long as you're not really grinding the campaign, I don't also really bother having perfect anti-tank gunner soldiers. So yeah, like this is a squad that you can theoretically save time on, though you can hear it first here in the next up big game upgrade or update. It's gonna very likely include heavy anti-tank guns, similar to the heavy machine guns buildable by machine gun squads. You will be able to build heavy anti-tank guns by anti-tank gunner squads. Once this drops, I'm gonna play anti-tank gun squads in most campaigns, simply for the fact that they are a super fun and b you can just shred tanks and especially infantry <laughs> with them. So yeah, they are going to be amazing. Now this Thompson, you can completely forget about it. It's basically nothing. It's it's actually worse than the previous Thompson. And the last tank also isn't important. So yeah, this is the whole campaign progression. If you want to see my late game army, well, it's one jumbo. It's two planes. A, the best plane obviously, and then a fighter plane. So I can, whenever I want to play, take a plane or whenever I need to blow up something, so I have two different types of planes to choose from, or two different types of squads. That's an attacker squad, that's a fighter squad, this is how you identify them. And then I got a machine gun squad, and I got a flame gun, flamer squad for basic pure firepower. I got a rifleman squad with grenade launchers, once I know oh, there are going to be too many enemies. Also great for capturing large objectives, because you have nine people instead of seven, which is amazing. And since you're an American anywhere, you want to have large amounts of soldiers to be able to capture all of the positions. And a flexible squad. This is an engineer squad. Currently, once once the anti-tank gunner update drops in the next months, I'm gonna put in an anti-tank gunner squad instead. Because, well, I try to have fun with the anti-tank gunners. So yeah, this is my army composition. And that's basically all you need to know about the campaign. Regarding maps, I made a video about ranking maps and it's two or three months old but nothing has changed <laughs> nothing important has changed i highly recommend watching it because there you see which maps to well to desert once you get them because some of them are absolutely no fun at all others though like the Lebre west map is one of the best in the games and extremely fun to play now as usual if you want to also by the way check out the gold order weapons i made videos about all of the gold order weapons here so you can know which ones are worth it and which ones are not. Similar to the gold order vehicles. And now you're ready to storm the beaches of Normandy and capture, recapture Europe. If you have questions, let me know. Until next time, goodbye.